Right, welcome back to Ren 382 on this rather cold, drizzly day in Jersey. Uh, we're back at Battery Lotheringen with Paul, who's currently sitting in his car because he's not going to get out till he has to. And Malcolm, he's having a chat with somebody to finish off uh, the last two videos you saw. So we'll be picking up from there and finishing the rest of the complex. And as you can see, today with us is Charlotte. Uh, so, uh, yeah, let's get going. Oh, and if you get any wind noise, as you can see, we're definitely on the coast today. Let's go. Right, so we're just on our way up to, I don't know if you can see it from here, because they've just gone behind the bushes, but just over here, that's gunpoint one. We're going over there, we're going to have a look at the command bunker there for gunpoint one. Uh, we will go back and look over here at gunpoint two over there afterwards. Um, I'm not sure if there's an awful lot we can see of gunpoint three, which is there. But right now we're working our way up here, as you can see, it's Malcolm and Paul. Erica trying to stay warm and Charlotte is the loony. Right, so what you guys just missed is this was an anti-aircraft gun. Yes. Um, and then the slots here would have been where they would have stored ammunition for it. Malcolm was just explaining that some of them are out on the headland like this and some of them are higher up on top of command bunkers like the big one up there is, which is where we're heading now. Right, so this is the top of the bunk. You see the hooks again. Like we saw an Altico, where they would have hung the uh, netting on there, the camouflage netting. And then you've got what would have been a light vent there, and then an air vent there. Uh, there's a corridor underneath here, which we'll be going in in a minute. That's where we're going now up this way. So let's go have a look. Right, so here we are. This is gun point one. This is a restored gun done by CIOS. Yep, Charlotte's just found a map of the whole complex there. Okay, that, that's two and five I'm assuming. Three, four, four, four. Right, so we're here. Yeah, we're here. This is gun point one. Gun point two, which is there. Over there. On the map is here. Over there. This is what we looked at earlier on. This is quite handy for you guys who haven't seen. This is where we were looking the other day. This is the main command bunker here. And these are the two bunkers we looked at, the storage and living bunkers. So they've been looked at. This is gun point three, which is that one just there. And this one, if we come down the map, this one here, that's gun point four. That's over there in the headland. You might just be able to see it sticking out beyond the main section of concrete there from gun point one. Um, that's all buried in overgrowth. You can't get in that one and you can't get in that one. But we're here today to look at gun point two and this one, which is gun point one, which is still accessible. So we're off down this way and we're gonna go have a look at the toilet block because even the Germans needed to pee. That's a pretty basic toilet. There you go. There you go. <laughs> I have to say you wouldn't want to pee in it now, not with the brambles. Count their arse, where their arse has gone here. Eh? <laughs> it goes, one, two, three, four, five. Seems to be a lot of lichen on there. The Germans must have had a good diet. <laughs> of limpets and uh, gooseberries. I suppose if you eat your local as well, if you around here, you probably would have got a lot of blackberries. Yeah, they would have, they would have been massive for blackberries and stuff, wouldn't it? Just thinking as well, back in like the... Um, so sort of like towards the end of the war when they had to leave and stuff. Rabbits. They would have been picking at all that stuff because of course they didn't have any other food. No, nothing at all. Limpets, they, they were making their own goulash out of nettles and... I think Charlotte may have found the bunker before actually Malcolm's taken us there. So, uh, but let's go have a look. Eric is at our photos. All right, let's go have a look inside this bunker. Either Malcolm or Paul will know what the little slot section here is for, next to the doorway. The what looks like a big hole. Is it? Is it? Yeah, there's a 
if you drop a grenade in the top, it, it yeah. explodes harmlessly out here and probably blow up the guy who's putting the grenades in or some a couple of them. <laughs> yeah, this one did have like force ventilation air pumps. Oh, okay. It relied on natural air flow, so chimneys would, would go into the room just to get the air through. Oh, and similar to like if you open your window at home. Shoots. Okay. See, a, a few of the bunkers here have an owl painted on the wall, you see it on the left there. Uh, stands for leashed or light construction. Right. It's not bomb proof. Okay. As a, like the fortress structures on the island. Right, so this one, would it have been all right in an air raid then, this yeah, one? Yeah, it would have given you some protection, but if it took a direct hit, it might not. Do I come behind you? Go on then. All right, now put it back, because it's not yours to touch. It's a vent. There you go, look. That's a clear picture there for you of gunpoint one. Daddy! Right, should we go through this way? One at a time. So they used to shift everything on the shale, stone, and stuff around. So, what was Paul? Do you know what that was? That's a, that's a field kitchen. That's it's a field that's kitchen. The, that's the front of the field kitchen. It's the. It's not the limber. It's the. Uh, that's just where the guys sit, isn't it? That's the piece yeah, the, the, the bit in front, yeah, the kitchen bit gets closed behind. Oh, okay, that's quite cool. Oh, is that what the pitch? So would have pulled it along like that? That's quite cool. They've got a massive cooking pot there. And got the barbed wire. And that would have been used to take away all the rubble and stuff from building. Do you know what the stands are for? Uh, two centimetre aircraft. Um. There we go. You've got a, what looks like a filled in vent at the back there as well. The bit that Charlotte's interested in, the darkness. Would have been the officer's room. Right, so this would have been an officer's room. Is this what Malcolm was saying? Yes. There we go. Look at that. There's that air vent. The air vent there. Now we've had heating, and you've got the wiring. And a, it's actually a metal roof. Metal roof. That's quite cool. And you can see here again what we'll get used to now is these wooden beams that would have allowed them to uh, put the wooden panelling on, being it's an office's room. I like the resonance, it's quite nice. But uh, there you go. This is part of the gun point. This is all part of gun point one. So these gun points are far more than what you see on the surface. Far more. You've got a filled in hole there, look. Right, just before we leave here, I've just noticed they've got the little rotating disc where they would have used it to turn it because it could have gone off left, right straight down because they would have pulled the wheels onto here so you can see it's got quite a small wheelbase there and that wheelbase would fit neatly onto this rounded section here and they'd be able to stop on there and then rotate it to which direction they wanted it to go off to which is quite cool all right so this is the second part of the bunker area we've just been talking uh, about grenades i didn't realize quite how many different versions of grenades the um Germans had that was quite interesting but uh got a support pillar here which I haven't seen on the other ones before you can hear Charlotte's footsteps I'm gathering that's for weight that's for a cable isn't it Melvin? yeah it links to from the command bunker to the guard there we go so that's what that's for yeah. commemorative bunker right so there's some proper gun bullets there. Would these been the ones that fired out the big one up top? Sorry, mate. These yellow. Yes. They were the ones that would have been for the big gun on the top yeah, there. Yeah, they would have been roughly what they would have fired. Give you an idea. Right, the way they've got like a little kind of yeah, sack boy thing to move it. Workshop slash door. I was talking to 
pull them out of the floor they're saying this owl here stands for light construction so that the people are aware Germans when they're in there that um, it's a light construction which means it won't take a direct bomb hit got a ventilation shaft there a bit hanging out of it brought you in here uh, it's not completely original because they're storing their things and stuff in here at the minute which is fine but you've got this is original German this look at that that's stunning so I think that stood the test of time is quite something and again, we've got the metal roofing. So we'll go out this way. That's what they had in Durflinger, but it was all half the border was missing. It's just down the, like the, where the cable, the distribution fuse box. Yeah, yeah for the electric, there's only like two miles. Someone's been busy. You can see what they properly dug out the hinges on that. The door was never fitted. Is that what it was? Yeah. So that's wasted. That was that's been waiting for a door since yeah, the nineteen forties. It, it never got. The other one had the door on, which was the cartridges originally for the gun. Right. The shell, so they weren't as sensitive as the cordite. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, it was a, you can see the marks on the wall on the left from the shell where they butted up. You see the owl oh, okay. painted on the wall as well. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, it was never finished. You can see the steel there as well for the roof embedded in the concrete there. That's quite cool. You wouldn't normally get to see that. It's more of a storage facility these days. Yeah, we use it just for stuff. Getting the rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> you can see another air vent there. Paint's fared well on the roof on this one. It's been repainted. It's quite cool. Well, you can see some of the marks. That's by the edge of the shells where they butted up. Oh, okay, that's fine. You see cool. that? If you go in all of them, you can see, see like the line of the curves from the shells hit. Some of them get yellow paint, there's a fairly clear one there. So these are all marks from the yes. shells being kept in? Because in the case, they would have had the wood panelling, wouldn't they, for like the commander's rooms and stuff? Obviously, these would have just been left like this, wouldn't yeah, they? Yeah, they didn't bother painting them because they weren't used a lot, sort of thing. So if you're not going to live in them, it's not much point. Cause it's, but no, then a lot of the wiring finished. gets to be done. The wiring gets redone most of most of these, doesn't it? So was the 40s wiring? Did it all need to be redone? Did it? Sorry. 1940s wiring. Did it all need to be redone? Yeah, it? it'll be ripped out after all. Each of these bunkers, when you come in, you see a little square hole with a wooden nail in it. That was for a thermometer. And every day when the battery was originally operational, soldiers would come round and check. The um, temperature in here, because the temperature of the cordite would affect the shell flight time. Right, Only okay. minuscule, but it would make the difference, sort of thing. So one soldier would have to go around all the bunkers every day and check the ammunition temperature in each wow. of the rooms, and then that would be noted and put into the calculations if they went into action. I suppose it depends on the type of ammunition as well, so the temperature range as well, did it? Yes. I mean, it's not massive temperature ranges, but yeah. if it was a cold day like today, where it's about six degrees, it, it, the cordite would burn slightly slower. So if you're firing over several kilometres, that could make a bit of a difference yeah. in how much push is behind the shell when it's fired. Well, cause, yeah, because they're not lightweight, those shells, so they're proper weight a ton, don't they? They're yeah, they're really I'm not heavy. Sure heavy they're over a good 100 kilo, yeah. about 150, I suppose. And when they launch at force, it's one like the gun. And that can make the world a difference, what you're saying, as to how much force they come out of the gun with. Yes. Oh, okay, that's quite... That's something that, like, a normal person wouldn't necessarily think of. You can see all the... Yeah, there's inscriptions, there's and... one that says, like... Got to read that one. Minska, I think, possibly. There's an S underneath, and there's one there. So, uh, quite a few of these bunkers have inscriptions in the entrances, or dates from 41, sort of thing. It wasn't unusual, was it, for the Germans to inscribe stuff in the walls and things? No, was if, it? You, if you start shining torches down walls like this, you do tend to pick stuff up, which is normally dismissed, sort of thing. Because under normal conditions, you just walk straight past it, because you have to catch it just right to see it's there. Yes. Yeah, same with this one, because you wouldn't really notice it otherwise. That one's obviously much deeper. Yeah, somebody's chiseled that. That one was done before it was painted, that's the original paint. Right. I think, looking at it, no, it might be dirt, but... It looks like it's an authentic one. Yeah. Some of post walks. That's probably been like, that's actually actually been scraped in with something, that one. That's probably been done, like you yeah. said. But yeah, that's definitely been scratched in.
There's another one there in pencil, but that's English and it's quite rude. <laughs> <laughs> so that one's definitely postal. Yeah, that won't be YouTube friendly, I don't think. No, another thing you get in bunkers in the window is the peacock butterflies. They come in hibernate. Sort of that's quite cool. Yeah, we just sort of leave them. Ah, the way you've got little static tights here on the roof. That's quite yeah, cool. the bunkers were, weren't built the prop, probably the best they could, so they suffered the problems of water ingress and that. You've got old piping there as well. That's from another bunker. Yeah. So, do you guys still actually repair the bunkers? Is it more a case of maintenance these days? Uh, yeah. It sort of left because of volunteer shortage. We sort of um, maintain the key core sites at the minute, sort of right. thing, and um, we'll see how things go in the future. Because you've got quite a few other sites, haven't you? Yeah, we've got quite a lot of sites. Um, I think we've got about 35 independent structures under the society's care. And that's a lot to look after if you have yeah, not been, if some, some, the, some are left as found. Yes. Secure them. Um, others are restored, like the, um, depending on where they are and what, what's um, important about them. Yeah. Like Millbrook, because it's a yeah, time capsule. Called the air for its completeness. Um, the command bunker here, because of its completeness again. And yeah. stuff like that. You see the grip on there, you're lucky. But most people, when they visit, are not interested in the ancillary works like it. It's like an ammo bunker, they walk off. There's not much point putting too much effort in more than like a couple of shells and a trolley so people see what it is. Yeah. And that's it, like, you know. Fair enough. We're going to go down the stairs, please, up before now. Yeah, we'll go there next. There should be lights on in there. Um, but uh, so I'll have to narrate you through the uh, next, I think there's like two, two and a half minutes. But uh, right, so this is the second part of the, uh, the bunker complex. Uh, I've just shown you the entrance there and what would have been the escape ladders when they uh, attacked. You can see there you've got the gun point. Uh, and I'll just hand this off to you. There you go. You've got the uh, hinges there that are still there from the original door, which is just behind me that I'm about to show you. Uh, they've got it there leaning against the wall. And uh, if we go through, you'll see here as well that uh, these ones, this door here, they couldn't actually open as Gerard took over there, so I had to actually cut them off. This one's pretty bare bones. Um, but Malcolm was saying uh, when he was taking us around this area that this is quite an unusual bunker. You've got the square section there, that's where your power supply would have been. You can see your hooks on the walls where you would have had um, all the, the beds. And then this patterning I'm showing you now on the wall, this is actually something that according to Malcolm is actually quite rare. Uh, it's very unusual apparently. He's o it's only been seen a handful of uh, German bunkers. And of course there you've got your air filter motor that would have been hooked up to the pipe up there, which is what Malcolm was explaining. Um, obviously far better than I can, which is obviously why I recorded it, but it's the same sound as non-existent for some reason, we don't know. But uh, yeah, so this is, this is a very interesting bunker. Um, also, uh, whilst I'm actually narrating, I'll take time to tell you in the last bunker I was showing you the trailer. Uh, cart, whatever you want to call it, they would have pushed down with the rubble in. That was actually rescued, and uh, Malcolm told me after he'd finished filming, that was actually rescued from the HO2 tunnel. Um, if you don't know what the HO2 tunnel is, um, I did do a video on that last year. Um, quite early on when I started filming, so it's not the best one. I may go back and redo that. It does niggle away at me slightly, but I know I could have done I could do so much better with that now than I did then, and I want to do the HO2 justice because it's going to be filled in. Uh, but you can see there, I'm showing you more of the air system. It would have that would have actually been for a cooker that bit there. That would have been the flue out. Uh, so when they were cooking, the smoke would have gone up through there and uh, out and into the uh, aperture bar above, and that's where Jeremy would get his water if there was any water inside. Of course, you've got your gun point there. So these bits are fascinating. And then you've got your escape shaft here. This one, the original bricks and mortars have been removed. 
so we've actually got concrete bricks here as a replacement instead. Um, Charlotte finds these shapes are specifically fascinating, uh, but I'm going to guess that's probably because it's always built with cottage, something like that, so I'm trying to see. But there you go. There was apparently, Malcolm was saying, an original one of, uh, of their bunkers had this. So the original brick's not touched, which apparently is also very rare. And then somebody, um, when they were tidying, decided the best thing to do was to go and knock the bricks down to see what was behind. You couldn't believe what they touched. Uh, <laughs> and there, that would have been your telephone point there. So you would have had your telephone communication wires going in, in and out of there. There wouldn't have been field telephones so much. It would have been mainly to contact the command uh, bunker at the front there that we showed you in part one. Right, so that's that anyway. The sound will come back in the next clip. And, uh, yep, hopefully this is the only time you have to hear me like this. Man, okay. some drive, so yeah. I've just shown me they've got here a little coat rail to put their coat on. Hook would have been for something that's not quite sure what, and you've got your insulation again there. You can see on this one as well where, like, the hinges, the people have actually they've cut it off. Yeah, from the oxy setting. So I take it the door wasn't going to open for them? No, it's when it was removed for scrap. So the door would have worked, but then they just locked them off the scrap. Oh, so well, they nicked it. Yeah, but I, um... And that door there is from this bit, I'm guessing, the door where you're in. Sorry, mate? The door that's behind Paul. No, we brought that one in. The idea was to hang it, but we never got around to it. We split the bottom hinge to try and get the pin out, because they seize up. But we never got that far. There was talk about putting the uh, armour door on here, but when we opened up the, the one with the mural in, that has all the doors in it. Yeah. So this one's been left, it's found, as you see it. That one's got all the doors in, so that so one's... These haven't been touched in like the 50s or whatever it was. No, uh, one of our members came in and restored it when we painted it all. Um, apart from that, yeah, it wasn't touched since it was sealed in the late 40s or early 50s. So I had quite a few, like we were saying on the last one, they had a few metal drives on that time, didn't they? Scrap drives, yes. Yeah. Yeah, they went on for quite a while. Right, now for the question. You must have got a lot of ventilation. In the stairs? Yeah, because the way they built this, it should, oh, be, cool. should be an air vent for over long, but... Was that ever the grill on it? Yeah, it did originally had like the little whole one but it's been just rusted Because it's funny to have one in the entrance as you come in, just sticking out the wall there. Yeah. No. Right, so that's it for gunpoint one. We've done all the bits here. So you've got a command bunker, the uh, personnel bunker down there. The other commercial personnel bunker on the other side here and the storage bunker but because I'm aware that Shane watches these videos what I will do is I'll take you round here for a minute which we've already looked at this but I shall also show you this section here So that's just a map of just gunpoint one, which is what we've been looking at. So the gunpoint was where we are now, that's behind us. That's the ammunition bunker we went and saw before. Wall supply bunker is that bit there. And then just behind those bushes there is where this would be. That's the barracks hut and the personnel bunker. And then the other personnel bunker which is behind us, the one you've just seen. So that's what we've been looking at so far. These huts, that you can see on the map, are no longer here. Um, and also, um, for thoroughness, because I will get told off otherwise, um, is that uh, there was more than one type of gun here. So originally, the original gun would have been mounted down over here. And then that gun was removed. It's like a standard gun. And replaced with this anti-aircraft gun. 
which was rescued uh, from um, down in the sea over there in the cliff face. They pulled it back up in uh, the 90s. But yeah, that's it for gunpoint one. Uh, in the next section or well, next video we'll be doing gunpoint two. So I'll see you then. As you can see, we're in bunker one, which is here, where my finger is. Bunker two and five is there. And we have bunker three somewhere on this map. But this is a map. This is the one we this is the one we're gonna be going to next time. And so that's a gun. Ready to keep it out, and it'll go over there. And then you have down here where you have these drawings where they box it off and then Spray painted it to look like they have the like there was nothing in here at all. So until then. So, until next time. I'll see you on bunker 33. We'll see you next time. We'll see you next time. <laughs>